Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello and welcome, my friend. Welcome to the Friday edition for Bible Tract Echoes. I hope you've had a great week. I hope you're anticipating a great weekend, especially being in God's house on this coming Lord's Day. I pray that you have a godly local church with a powerful pastor to declare the Word of God. I hope the singing that happens at your local church just stirs not just your heart, but the heart of the congregation. And as the church prepares through song to hear the Word of God, that the Spirit of God moves in lives even during the song service. Well, to that end, I hope that our time together here uh, around the radio is profitable for our lives as well. My Bible is sitting open right now to the book of Leviticus chapter 22. Leviticus 22, if you can, reach over, pick up your own copy of God's Word and join me there. I've got a gospel tract in my hand, frankly, one of my favorite gospel tracts of all the ones that we produce. I want to put this track and a sample packet of our tracks into your hand. It's free of charge. Let me do that, would you please? To do that, to make that happen, you're going to have to give to me your name and your mailing address. Our contact information will be given by my announcer at the end of the program, so have pen and paper ready. To get us ready for Leviticus chapter 22, let me begin this way. I took three days to walk through chapter 21, but I'm going to deal with chapter 22 in just today's broadcast. These two chapters are directed at the Old Testament priests, the priests of Israel, and they were things here that made the priest unfit to serve God. They're listed here. And because the priests were sanctified or set apart as special by God, these priests had a higher standard of regulations placed upon them and their day-to-day life. And as we step now into chapter 22 today, the focus will be on how the priest's personal lives could end up not only profaning themselves, but they could profane God's holy name as well. That's a dangerous thing. These two chapters, Leviticus 21 and 22, end up with a solemn warning from God. I think the warning really here is not just for the priestly family, but was given for the whole nation to hear. You see, the whole nation was going to be impacted by having either holy priests or profane priests. I think that principle applies to the New Testament church today. The whole congregation at a local church is going to be impacted by having either a holy pastor and church leaders or profane pastors and church leaders. Now, that's a rather solemn statement. So join me here, Leviticus 22, with pen and paper ready, and let's take a serious look at what God says to the Old Testament priest. I mentioned the gospel tracts here a moment ago, and by the way, that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. I'm talking about an evangelism tool, a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation that you can easily carry and hand out to somebody else. We are to give the gospel to every person, but so often in our lives we meet people in passing that we just honestly don't have the time to stop and tell them the gospel story. But we can give them the gospel story through a gospel tract. This one is my favorite, one of my favorites. It's called The Gift. The Gift. It begins this way. You'd be surprised if you knew how many blessings God wants to give you. And all of these gifts are found in the gift of God, his own dear son. And then John 3, 16 is given there. Later on in the track, it says all of God's gifts are found in the gift of his son. And it lists these gifts that God wants to give. Forgiveness of sin, peace with God, and eternal life. Do you have those, friend? Do you have forgiveness of your sin? Do you have peace with God? 
Do you possess eternal life? They are found in Jesus Christ, God's Son. Here's a great gospel tool, the gift. I want to give it to you. Again, at the end of the program, be ready when my announcer gives our contact information and just ask for the sample packet or go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible's open, I want to read some verses here out of chapter 22. First of all, verses 1, 2, and 3 say this, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, that they separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Israel, and that they profane not my holy name in the things which they hallow unto me. I am the Lord. Say unto them, Whosoever he be of all your seed among your generations that goeth unto the holy things, which the children of Israel hallow unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, that soul shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. Look at verse 10. There shall no stranger eat of the holy things. A sojourner of the priest or an hired servant shall not eat of the holy things. Now, verses 19 and 20. Ye shall offer at your own will a male without blemish of the beeves or cattle of the sheep or of the goats. But whatsoever hath a blemish, that shall ye not offer, for it is not to be acceptable for you. And then the last three verses. Therefore shall ye keep my commandments and do them. I am the Lord. Neither shall ye profane my holy name, but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel. I am the Lord which hallowed you that brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. All right. Leviticus chapter 22 has four sections to it. I've titled each section with a key word beginning with the letter E, like in the word elephant, and let me give them to you right now. Section one is verses one through nine. My word there is exercising. The verses there talk about exercising the office of being a priest. And if a priest had a defective life, then his offerings that he did as a priest done on behalf of other people were called profane. Again, that word profane means to be make made polluted, and you could even pollute God's name. Section number two is verses 10 to 16. My key word here is eating, the eating of the offerings. The priest received a portion of almost all the sacrifices that the people brought to the tabernacle, and this portion was how he fed his family. But God specified who could and who could not share in the eating of those things offered to God. Let me just add, by the way, here that one of the struggles of the Old Testament priest that he must have faced was that he had to remind his children how special the food was that they were eating. So it's so easy for the children of God's full-time workers to lose the sense of specialness, of sacredness in those things, those items used for the worship of God. All right, let's come to section three. That's verses 17 to 30. My word here is examining, examining. The priest had to examine the offerings, the animals. You see, not all animals were fit to be used as an offering to God. The animals had to be without any blemish. And obviously, these animals were a picture of Jesus Christ, who is God's final and God's fulfilling sacrificial lamb. That brings us to section 4, verses 31, 32, and 33. My word here is exhortation. These are an exhortation about offering things to God. And again, it appears that this exhortation, this warning was directed not just at the priest, but to all of Israel. Notice three things here from this exhortation section, verses 31, 32, and 33. Look at verse 31. It says again, Therefore shall ye keep my commandments and do them. I am the Lord. Now, what gave here, what he's talking about here, does not apply solely to chapters 21 and 22. It applies to all of Leviticus, especially thus far. These are commands on how to worship God in that era. There, these instructions are called commands, they're not suggestions. That being said, let me make an application at this point. 
No, we do not follow these sacrifices and these ceremonies in the church age, but let us be careful how we worship a holy God. So the first thing to notice here are the commands. Notice the C word, the commands. We are warned here about the commands, exhorted to obey God's commands. Let us have churches, let us have churches that worship following the commands found in the word of God. Next, notice the carefulness. I move from commands to the carefulness about God's name. Look at verse 32. The verse says this, Neither shall ye profane my holy name. God's name, which represents his entire reputation and character, is called hallowed in verse 32. That that sounds a lot like the Lord's Prayer, doesn't it? Do you know the one that begins, Our Father, which art in heaven? Do you know the next phrase? I bet you do. It's called, Hallowed be thy name. Now, believe it or not, I have actually heard pastors standing in the pulpits of Bible-teaching churches, and I've heard them say things like this, Oh, my God, and oh, my gosh. I've heard them say it from the pulpit. These kinds of statements are called minced oaths. Look them up in a dictionary. You're going to find that they are a minced oath. They're taking God's name in vain. God's name is a hallowed name. We are not to use it in an unhallowed fashion. Brethren, we dare not do these things standing in the pulpit or just in day-to-day life as any believer. We've had the commands We've had the carefulness. Now, the third thing to notice here begins at the end of verse 32 and spilling over into verse 33. Here the Bible says this, I am the Lord which hallowed you that brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. We move from command to carefulness and now to connection. God reminded the priesthood and, frankly, all of the nation of Israel that they were redeemed by God to be in a relationship with him, connected to him. They were a hallowed people. And again, that word hallowed is often translated in our Bibles, the Hebrew word, by the word holy, It refers to someone or something that is dedicated, that is prepared, something that is set apart for a special reason, a special purpose, a special task. Beloved, if you claim Jesus as your Savior, then you are a hallowed person unto God. You can probably quote Ephesians 2, 8, 9, can't you? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Great, but can you quote verse 10, which follows it? It says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained or planned that we should walk in them. Oh, beloved, tell me, who are you living for today? You're living for yourself or being hallowed unto God? Is there anything in your life or my life that's profaning God's hallowed name? We are called believer priests. Are we offering hallowed sacrifices to God because we are dedicated, prepared for a special purpose, and ordained for that by God? Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188. Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.